Hey guys, if you're watching this video right now, that means the March test is right around the corner. First, comment below, how much have you studied so far and what have you done to prepare for this test? If watching this video is the first thing you've done to get ready, I will say a little prayer for you. All joking aside though, you're gonna be all right. In this video, I will give you 10 useful tips and strategies that you can use to boost your score and get some more points on the test, even if you haven't studied that much. And worst case, if you totally bomb this test, you can always sign up and take another one. So I would recommend you hit the subscribe button and notification bell below, just in case, because I come out with useful videos every week and I will help you get to your goal. All right, before we get into the tips, this video is brought to you by Preply, the first ever digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and Google Play. Preply has already helped hundreds of students improve their SAT scores immensely. So if you don't like being tied down to a computer and if you don't really feel motivated to do a full practice test in Blue Book exams, Preply is a perfect alternative for you. It's a daily practice app that you can do right from your phone. So if you want to just practice a handful of questions in English or math, great. We've got over a thousand unique questions in the app that mimic those on College Board's Blue Book exams. Preply is convenient, efficient, and you can prep your way to boost your score on your own terms. So if you're gearing up to take the March test, Head to the App Store or Google Play, download Preply today, and join our community of learners who have already taken their scores to the next level. All right, guys, my first last minute tip for the March Digital SAT is to start with number 15 on the English. Starting with number 15 on the English is better for time management because it takes you to the quicker, easier questions first. So you will get through the grammar questions, transition questions, note-taking questions, and then you can loop back to number one and do the words and context questions. These take less time, you can get them out of the way, and then you can spend more time and energy on the harder, more intensive reading questions. So why they didn't design the English sections like this, I have no idea because the math gets progressively harder as you go. So you can re-engineer the English sections to make them so they get progressively harder as you go as well. My second last minute tip is to use Desmos often. Guys, that built-in calculator is a gem. So make sure that you're using it anytime you encounter a really difficult algebra problem with constants in it, like A, B, or C, because then you can use the slider to move the constant around till you get what you want. Also, a great time to use Desmos is when they give you a system of equations. It's just much easier to type the two equations in and see what you need instead of trying to solve it by hand. There are definitely more times than those to use Desmos, so I would encourage you to start to play with the Desmos program, like go to desmos.com and try some math problems over the next couple of days before your test to see what you can do with Desmos. All right, tip number three, you wanna be prepared the night before the test to reduce anxiety. So that means making sure your admissions ticket is printed and ready to go. Your outfit is picked out, make sure it's comfortable, sweatpants work great, make sure you have number two pencils, make sure that your device that you're bringing is fully charged, so just leave it on the charger overnight. If you have a laptop and an iPad, make a decision which one you wanna use. I would probably recommend going with the iPad because it's just a little bit quicker to pick your answers instead of trying to use the, the trackpad and the mouse to, to select your answers if you're on a laptop. Also too, make sure you have a little bag ready to go with some water and snacks in it. Um, you're gonna have a 10 minute break between modules. So if you need a boost, I would say pack a snack that has some carbs in it or like a little bit of sugar. I hate to say that, like, Obviously eating sugar isn't good, but you might just need that little boost to get you through the last hour of the test. Okay, my fourth tip is to think about the layout and use metacognition. So if you're on number two, it should be a fairly easy math problem. If you're overcomplicating it and it's taking you three minutes to work it out, you need to take a step back and think about your own thinking. That's what metacognition is all about. So if you recognize you're overthinking it, stop, mark it to come back to and just move on. Same goes if like the reverse, if you're on like a number 19 or a number 20, 
those problems are supposed to be harder. So if you get the answer in like 10 seconds, that's a red flag, question that, because you're probably oversimplifying the problem. All right, tip number five is to play positive negative when you're on the English. This works especially well with words and context questions. You might not know all of the words that they give you, but if you can tell from the tone of the text that it's positive or negative, pick a positive sounding or a negative sounding word to match. All right, tip number seven is to use your scrap paper for all of your work. Don't do any annotating in the Blue Book exams app. It's too limited. You can't doodle, you can't draw pictures. So when you're gonna systemize your approach, it's better to just have a system where you use the scrap paper for everything. That means annotating and paraphrasing your English passages on the scrap paper, as well as writing your math work on the scrap paper. As you can see, I folded my paper in half a few times and I got these perfect squares. You can, if you wanna save some time, cause I know folding takes a little bit of time, you can just draw a line down the middle and then four lines going across if you're good at drawing straight lines, which I am not. Now I'm gonna put my numbers up in the corner or I can just do it as I go. So when I get to the next number, I'll put it up in the corner. And that way I have one box designated for each question. When I'm done with this side, I can flip it over and then I can also use the boxes on the back. What's nice about having all of your work in one place is if you flag a question to come back to, you can always go back and check your work later. However, for some questions, I would recommend just starting a fresh sheet of scrap paper and trying the question again, because sometimes it's hard to check your work, but this is where you should be doing your annotations. All right, tip number eight, work backwards. So if you get stuck on a math problem and they give you regular numbers as the answer choices, whether they're integers or um, terminating decimals, then take those numbers and plug them back into the problem to see which one works. Sometimes it's hard to come up with an equation. So if you're at a loss and you can't figure out how to write the equation to solve the problem, this is a way better approach where you can still pick up the point. All right, tip number nine. On the English sections, make sure you always read the question first before you do anything else. Too many students, when they hit the next button, are starting to just read the paragraph without even knowing what they're looking for. And this wastes valuable time. So if you look at the question first, you'll know what they're asking for, and then you can read actively and make sure you're looking for what you need. All right, the, my last and final tip is to use majority rules when you're stuck and you have to guess wisely. So majority rules basically allows you to whittle down the answer to the right one because it has the most characteristics in common with the other answer choices. This works really well on certain math problems as well as apostrophes questions. So if you notice that two words have an apostrophe in the same place, then you can cross off the other two that are different and keep going from there till you get the right answer. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope these 10 tips were helpful for you. Go ahead if you made it to the end of this video and comment the word cram in the comments below so that I'll know you made it all the way to the end with me. I appreciate you so much for that and I wish you the best of luck on your test this weekend. Until next time, guys, happy prepping. <laughs>